Hi everyone, welcome to another weekly Forex forecast for the week ending October 30th, 2020. My name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action, and in today's forecast, we're going to talk about the Euro USD, the Pound USD, the Dollar Yen, the Australian Dollar, as well as VET or VeChain, which is a cryptocurrency I've been talking about now for several months. We're finally starting to see some action, including the Euro and the Dollar Yen. Both of those are moving as expected. So we'll talk about that and more in today's video, so let's get to it right now. A quick disclaimer that today's video is for educational purposes only. All views are my opinion and are not intended as investment advice. Forex is a high reward, high risk business, and you should not trade with borrowed money or money you cannot afford to lose. See the description of this video for the full disclaimer. First up, we have the Euro USD, and I made a video about this one last week where I mentioned how we're still getting this sideways movement after closing above 116.15. So this is the bottom of this range currently, and the top of this range comes in right around 1950 or so. We also have what could be a descending channel off of some of these lows and this high up here. It's still a bit speculative because we have to wait and see how the Euro USD reacts to this upper level over the coming days. But if we do get a reaction up here, this isn't a selling opportunity for me. I want to see how it reacts because if we do get a slight sell off, that could be an indication that this pattern right here, this descending channel is significant. Therefore, a close above this upper level could also be significant. However, the pair needs to get above that 119.50 to 70 area in order to confirm a breakout from this sideways movement. I'm also still long here. I mentioned last week in the video that I had a small starter position on following this close above this high back here. I also said I like the idea of this high becoming new support, and sure enough, between Thursday and Friday, it did just that. So we'll see if this pair can continue to push higher up into the top of that descending channel and eventually break above that area. But given the uptrend that's been intact here for several months, I like the idea of buying the Euro USD on breakouts, and I'll go ahead and add to my starter position if we do get a move up here into the 1970 area and a close above that. Now my target, if we do get a breakout, is gonna be that 125 area. Looking at the monthly time frame, you can see where the pair is also holding well above that multi-year trend line. And 125 is this swing high back here. So that's gonna be my target. And as I mentioned recently too, even if we do get a pullback from the Euro, it can actually pull back as far as 114.50 and still be constructive. Notice how this is the location of this trend line. It's also a key horizontal level. So 114.50 is gonna be one to keep an eye on if we do see weakness over the coming days and weeks. But again, as of right now, even if we did get a rotation lower into 114.50 or even back to 116.15, I would obviously get out of my position I have on now, but I would still be looking for buying opportunities given the fact that we have this uptrend, the pairs holding above that multi-year level, and we also have this nice sideways consolidation. So all in all, the Euro still looks constructive, but we are still seeing sideways consolidation. That's gonna be the case as long as the pair is below 119.70 on a daily closing basis. The British pound is next, and this one has gotten really messy. I mentioned this last week, but even though we have this uptrend that's still intact, and you can even see where this trend line is outlining this uptrend, we've gotten really messy through here even though we're just moving higher, there's a lot of chop happening through this area. So I'm not gonna trade the pound. I haven't traded it for a long time because the near-term direction here isn't very clear. Even though the 130 area could serve as support, it didn't back here when the pair closed above it on this candle. So we'll have to see how the next few days play out. Um, 130 could become support. 132.60 is gonna be resistance. And of course, this trend line down here is going to be critical support. If we do see the pound rotate lower, take out 130 and retest this trend line, if it then closes below this trend line, that could mean that we're in for another pullback perhaps into 126.70. At the same time, if we do rotate higher, move back to 132.60 and close above that, that would indicate strength and it could also expose the 134.70 to 80 area. Things get a lot more clear though when you look at the monthly time frame. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but there is a falling wedge that's been forming here for the last 20 years. So this is something to keep an eye on because even though last month carved a bearish engulfing month indicating that we could see further weakness from the pound, this structure right here over the coming months 
could send the pound much, much higher once it finally breaks out of the top of that wedge pattern. So that could be many months or even a year away, but this is something to keep an eye on as things unfold. Because if we see the pound come up and retest this recent swing high, that's right around the location of that multi-year wedge pattern. So this is something to keep an eye on over the long term, but in the short term, the pound is very indecisive and it's something that I'm gonna stay away from. This is the dollar yen symmetrical triangle that we've been working with now for several months. So this triangle or wedge pattern broke out back here in July and you can see how this 106 to 10650 area has served as resistance ever since. Now we didn't get a lot of follow through following that breakdown in July. However, we are starting to see a little bit of follow through now in October. And that's no surprise because recently I talked about this trend line from the year to date low that connects with some of these lows back here, including this one. And you can see where the dollar yen retested the underside of that trend line on the dot. We also have this short term trend line here that formed a little bit of a rising wedge, albeit a very small one. Now we got that close here. I talked about last week how we could get another push lower as long as the pair stayed below this recent swing high. It obviously did that. And we also got that push down into the 104.20 region. Notice how it's been in support now for several months. So 104.20 is gonna be the area to break on a daily closing basis in order to expose the 101 area. Looking at the monthly time frame, you can see where 101 has been significant, where it was resistance back here, support, support through here, and then support recently. So 101 has been my target now for several months. It's taken the pair a long time to get there, but it does look like we're finally starting to get some momentum in the right direction. So this idea is intact as long as this downtrend is also intact. Notice how ever since February, the pair has been making lower highs into the 104.20 area. We retested it back here, made a lower high, came back, retested it here, made a lower high. Now we're retesting it again. So as long as these lower highs stay intact, I like the idea of an eventual close below 104.20. If the dollar yen does start to push higher and starts to take out some of these recent highs like this one back here, that could be an indication that the dollar yen is gonna turn higher. But as of right now, I like the idea of further weakness and an eventual close below that 104.20 area. The Australian dollar is still consolidating below a trend line I mentioned a few weeks ago. And at the time I talked about it when we had these two highs back here and it was retesting this trend line right through here. You can see where that trend line attracted sellers. The pair rotated lower to retest that 70-30 area. Notice how 70-30 was resistance back here. It then closed above that area. 70-30 is now serving as support. So the idea here is pretty simple. If the Australian dollar can close above this trend line, so we get a daily close above the trend line, that could indicate a push higher, perhaps up here toward the 74 area. Alternatively, if we do see a daily close below 70-30, that could indicate that we're gonna see further weakness from the Australian dollar. However, just like several other majors, we do have this uptrend that's been in place. So I like the idea of looking for buying opportunities rather than selling opportunities as long as we have this uptrend in place. But it's all gonna come down to 70-30 and that short-term trend line. So basically, as long as we're between these two levels, I have no interest here. I wanna see a breakout above this trend line for a push back up to some of these highs, including 74. Now, if we do get a close below 70-30, that could indicate further weakness but I won't be trading it simply because again, the momentum right now is with buyers. Last but not least, we have VeChain's token VET. This is a cryptocurrency I've talked about now for several months. I was buying this back here before this consolidation and I have not sold a single VET. In fact, I've been buying through this entire pullback. So all of these pullbacks through here, I was buying. And the reason for that is that VET is a long-term investment for me but also because this pullback always looked constructive to me. So we had this rally back here. This triggered a 150% rally. We had a nice spike in volume as the pair broke out. We've then consolidated now for 74 days prior to this breakout right here. Now, the one thing we haven't had this time though is volume. So if you'll notice back here, when we broke out in July, we had a nice ramp in volume as the pair also broke out. So this time we've had a breakout on this candle here but volume did spike a little bit on the breakout day. 
However, since then, we haven't had any volume coming into this. So if this breakout is going to hold, we do need to see volume start to ramp again. And we also need to see this level right here hold as new support. If it doesn't, it would indicate that this breakout is false. However, as of right now, as of this video, this breakout is in play, which means that the potential for VET to move higher is there. Now, as far as key levels on the way up, there's one in particular right around 0.0153 to 4. That's going to be the area right through here. Notice how it was support back here. And then the pair closed below it. And that region became resistance. So this is going to be a critical area on the way up. And of course, that area just above 2 cents, somewhere around 0 0.023, is also going to be critical. So as I mentioned, I was buying back here. I was buying on the way up through here. And I've also been buying all of these pullbacks through this area. So this is a 16 month hold for me. I'm not concerned what happens over the next few days or even weeks. You know, VET could come back and close below this level, indicating that this breakout was false. And I would still be holding. In fact, I'd probably buy more down toward 0 0.0085, which is a critical support that I've been talking about now on Twitter for the last few weeks. I'm still holding here. I've been buying the dips and this breakout is intact. However, we do need to see volume start to come in to indicate that this breakout can be sustained. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.